are utilizing data on a large scale, the large scale they are making use of data. Yeah, at every every phase, every um facet, they are making use of data. That's why that's what differentiates an advanced country from a developing country or on on that developed country. Yes, yeah, so the um rate at which they make use of data that they have like they are surrounded by. So it informs their decision that makes their economy much more developed than has. So we're at that point we are in Nigeria because we don't make relevant use of data. Yeah, so that's why I'll start on that note. And um this um some of you are the digital marketers, some of you are just trying to venture into tech. What is your pros what is prospect for you as a data analyst? And I need to start on this note. Why? Because you need to see the figures to be motivated. So take for instance, now you see a job of 30,000 error and I see a job of 1 million error. So when you see the figures, it's enough to um, trigger your interest. Yeah, so if you say, ah, I, can't, I can't do a job of 30,000 error, I think the 1 million. So it's clear, it, there's no need to explain. Like the, the popular slang that is going around that says, uh, you can explain entire no evidence, but this one there is evidence, so there's evidence and it's real, it's it's sure, it's predictable. So, going to data analysis is a very good venture, it's a very good venture, it's a very good decision. So, you have taken a very great decision to um choose the field of data analysis. Yeah, so I'm just going to pick one or two of the statistical evidence just to reinforce my point. And uh, first, you can see the projections for um, the market size of um, global data analytics in 2026. By 2023, that's three years from now, it's going to be worth $133 billion. And it's not one person that's going to be owning this $133 billion. In reality, it's not one person. So if you are earning as much as $5,000 every month, you're good. Every month, $5,000 every month. You have to keep your own quota as a data analyst. So if there are 100,000 jobs or 100,000 openings for data analysts, definitely you can't, you can't exhaust one that $3 billion on just 100 people, 100,000 people or 10,000 people or 1,000 people. So out of that 100,000, you can be part of them. So you can earn, you don't have to be earning the whole one up to 100 million for you know your earnings because the exchange rates is just speaking the whole volume you need to hear. So this is one thing that I need to convince you once again that you are in the right class and you're on the right path. So um, moving on. So at the end of this webinar, I, I, I set out some things I, I want us to achieve. So number one is understanding. You understand why data is important. And so you understand problem solving as a data analyst. Yeah, that's two. Third thing will be you choose your ad as a data analyst. And three, which is number four, which is um, you'll be able to take on any data and make relevant insights from it. it so that's a key thing you'll be able to do at the end of this webinar so um which is very important yeah so um uh, moving on um what action you would take is you write two things you would do better um as a data analyst after now yeah so for perspective you would be able to take decision on what you need to do to become one. And for those who are on track or who are already doing data analysis on a, in a small scale, they'll look at two things they need to improve to become better at it. So I, I want us to look at this slide for, for some seconds. Look at this slide for some seconds and um, yeah, so if you have checked the slide and um, were good to go, type check in the chat box. Yeah, just type check. 
let me know if you are good to go if you are good to go so just type check in the chat box and i would move for someone to say check can anyone hear me check all right all right thank you check. so all right thank you um moving on so this is our outline for today check Why yeah do... yeah it's in the chat box check. all right sorry i can't see the chat box because i'm presenting so i guess that's where um, the challenge is so uh, just a minute so okay. Right. Okay, so our outline will be why data, who needs data, how to handle data, and we look at some business case scenarios which would uh, propel us into the decision making part of data analysis. So we're moving on. Now you have a task to do. So you are going to write one thing. You want to gain at the end of this webinar just write down one thing just a thing you don't have to write five just one thing because for you to join this meeting it's you, know, you surely want to set expectations you don't just go through this meeting your time is valuable you don't go through this meeting and not have one thing that you want to take after now so quickly write just one thing you intend getting at the end of this webinar just one thing okay Mohammed with um, clarity. Who else? Who else is typing? All right. Uh, Kabi wrote enough guidelines that will help me get a job. Storytelling, first thing. And maybe Lola. Okay. One more person, we're good to go. understanding the issue okay, right but okay we can move on now thank you all for your responses yeah um prof you had said how to analyze data um chukwimika said problem solving i by this slide i i i hope all i believe all your questions will be answered oh, by then we're done with this problem now. so let's move on why data why data so mic is hot okay thank you so why data the why of data why data you know some people are very passionate about their job when you meet some people and you see how they talk about their job you like just like you mean i recently was viewing a video of a last man that was he dances when it's directing traffic he, he dances and he was asked the question he said he enjoyed the job he's doing so he enjoys his job so anytime, any day, you uh, you notice this man is happy, his, his energy is alive all through doing his job. So it's same for a data analyst. The way a data analyst you convey the message of data, is, it shows how much passion he has for it. So the why of data, just, just save us time for his informed decision making. Why do you need data? If one asks you why data, so why do I need a data analyst? So it's because you need to make informed decision making. You need to make informed decision making. And the data are needed for decision making are everywhere. But it's only a data analyst that can bring it together and make sense out of it. So that's where it, that's where the, a data analyst comes in. So that's the why of data. It helps in informed decision making. We need evidence to to take um, a bull by his own. So, as you see, you need evidence. You need evidence. If I want to go and arrest a drug dealer, I, I cannot just go into his apartment and say you're under arrest. I need a search warrant. I need um, credibility, credible evidence. Maybe a video of him transporting drugs to show that, yes, you are a culprit. So that's informed decision making. You need data for problem solving. Someone asks 
says that if one of these wants to learn it, has to be like a problem solving. Before you can solve a problem, you need to have some mic is hot. Um, Elizabeth, can you help me check who is that? Who that is? I've I've muted him. All right, thank you. So um, so problem solving. So every data analyst, the most basic thing you need as a data analyst is problem solving. I don't want you to become a data analyst that you be a problem solver. At the most basic level, you should be a problem solver. Yeah, so if you need data and a data analyst for problem solving because they, they look at data and they, they see the challenge in it and they make sense to improve process or to improve decision making for the organization. So for greater understanding, you need data. You need data. So some people might actually have an idea what is the challenge. This is not a, a theory class, it's a practical class. And it's data is data analysis job is is not theoretical in nature. It's not uh it's practical. So I'll give you an instance. Um take for instance now someone who sells akara or who sells um bread every day and then maybe he produces 20 bread every day and he sells maybe five today. By the end of the day, it's only five he was able to sell, despite him making 20. Next day, he produces under 20, and he sells maybe two or three. Then he produces next day. So at the end of the week, he, he has produced 100 um, bread, and he sold maybe, maybe out of 100, he sold 20 or 30. Person can tell he's having an issue. Why? Because how will I make 100 bread? And that means over over 70 of the bread is wasted and I can only make gain of 30. Yeah, so I could only really sell 30. So the person knows there is an issue, but the person cannot make the decision, a decision if he does not have a better understanding of what the issue is. So a data analyst can come in and look at, okay, let's, let's get data for what the issue is. Okay, uh, maybe you open your shop by by 12 in the afternoon and most people buy bread by 7 8 in the morning so that's where the influx is so when you open your shop okay that's first data point okay who are the people that the day of the week that you have your greatest sale what actually happened that day oh that day people don't eat they don't eat um they, they are not chance to eat um every food so they decide to buy bread that day okay that's another data point so you just come up with data points like that. And before you know it, okay, okay, I will suggest that open your shop 8 a.m. every day so you could sell all your bread before noon. Or on particular this particular day of the week, make more than you make, um, produce more than your usual number of bread. You will sell everything. So it's just an instance. And that's just data points. But data points is scattered. But it's only data analysts that can give that greater understanding that you require. So that's where a data analyst comes in. So you can see for greater understanding, your job is important. For improving processes, yes, we have, we have very short time, so I'm going to speed up. Yeah, for improving processes and for understanding behavior, it's very important that you are you are very conversant with all this. So let's move on quickly. Fun fact. Um, we all thrive on data. We humans are working databases. We all are working analysts. We all analyze data and we all use data for our decision making. So uh, these are not just being facts. We all analyze data. Before you can pick your kind of friends, you would look at them. What, what family are they from? What uh, background are they from? What kind of activities do they engage in? So you don't just make friends. You look at their background. So their background are data points. So at every point in time, we interact with data, intentionally or unintentionally, we interact with data. So that's what one of the things you need to understand. Once you think this way, you'll be able to solve real life case scenarios. So you not just think data analysis as an abstract thing. You see it as a practical thing once you interact with it daily. So you understand that you are a working database. Take for instance now, some of you can remember the name of a classmate that you went to school with during your primary school days. 
So you can remember like five of them. If you could remember their faces, you could remember their best color then. And you are maybe 40 years old now. But that's how many years ago. So you can imagine. So if you have this understanding, you will tend to see data, the real life thing, something you can relate with, something you can apply in your daily life. So those things are data points, so which is very important. So I'll move on to the next thing. Who needs data? Then I'm just trying to lay a foundation for you to, because I know some people are actually new to this field and um, they need to, um, they need to, they need to like create that um, interest. They need to see why it's a, it's a good thing to go into. And one of the things that Jupiter Academy is going to help you do is, it's going to set you on course. It's going to set you on course. That's one of the things it's going to do. Because you can't learn um, in an array. You need someone who is experienced to guide you through all these things. And learning in this array, you might just not give the required goal to you, you need. So as time goes on, I'll make you see the reason why um, investing in a course for data analysis is very important. So it's good, watching YouTube videos is good, but you need a guided growth. Someone that went to school um, year one, year two, year three, and someone that is just going here and there, okay, go to this place, take one course, go to someone that there's a process to his growth. So every, every child growing up, so there's a way they feed them, um, there's the food they take at, 12 months, there's a food they take at when they are two years, they can start eating solid, they can start eating solid. So, but maybe within six months, one year, they are, they are on exclusive breast milk. So it's the same thing for the Jupiter Academy um, platform. One of the things it does for you is it gives you food, start as milk, move from milk to meat. So that's very important and you would not get it just anywhere. You get it in the in an academy that they have process to guiding your group. So it's one thing that you need to consider, invest in Jupiter Academy courses and take their courses because you would enjoy it. So let's move on. Who needs data? You need to understand who needs it so you know where you fit. So it's one thing, uh, I know it's all looking, it's all looking like this thing is, so you need to, all these bases are what makes us, so you don't just, be someone who is just a data analyst, but you don't know where you fit. You understand? So who needs data? You need to know that everybody needs data. Everyone needs data. It's like a daily thing. It's not data. It's not internet. Too. I'm not talking about internet. I'm talking about data. Yeah, data. You need data for everything. Every single thing you do, every interaction, you need data. I'm going somewhere. I'm going to Keja. I'm going to Abuja. What is the flight forecast saying? Okay, we can't fly today. Okay, I'll have to delay my flight till tomorrow. That's the data. That's the data you just received and you have processed it to take a decision. So I need to go somewhere tomorrow. Okay, who are the people that are going to be there? Oh, okay, I don't think I need to be there then. This social person is going to be there. You have informed your decision making. So, which is one of the things that data does. And every organization needs data, every sector needs data. So, uh, what sectors need data in Nigeria? So um, quickly, we have financial sector, communication sector, information sector, health sector, manufacturing sector, and entertainment sector. All these sectors need data. So you need to know where you fit in any of these sectors. Some of you are, you have background of health. So yes, there's health analyst. There's a data analyst in the field of health. So all these people that prepare COVID-19 reports, these people that prepare any vaccine um, effectiveness, charting is showing the um, effectiveness, showing the rate of death, seeing the effect, uh, the um, e the healing, showing the um, a lot of a lot of details. Okay, people age ten to twelve actually react to the vaccine. People age sixty-seven to seventy, they actually get infected quickly, those are data points. And a data analysis in health sector would help this much more presentable. So someone in the financial sector, banking, banking, fintech, we are talking about fintechs are paying data analysis cool money for 
the position. They pay them because they do not at every point in time to make a very great, great um, product offering to a customer. You need to have data points. You need to have enough data about the customer and analyze it so you can take decision. Okay, let's introduce quick cash. Let's introduce quick money. Let's introduce quick loan because maybe seventy percent of our customers are small business owners. So they need they need they need they need data they need data they need data for every single decision making single decision making process so which is very 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 important very important uh, very important so you need to look at these sectors and know where you fit so you're not just be someone that's just jumping here and there it's a good thing to um you are still getting there in this class so i will, I will, I will not just rush things yeah, so having known this, um, type check if type check if you get got what I've been said and we can move ahead. So I'm waiting for your checks in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, great, great. So let's move on. So how do you handle data? So I think we're already solving some people's problem gradually. Yeah, so I think um, I know some people are already getting their liberation a bit in terms of what they want to achieve. So um, how do you undo data? So they are. So I summarize it in seven processes. Data decision, data collection, data cleaning, data analysis. Uh, we have data inter interpretation, data visualization. I add a seven, which is business decision. It's our main reason why we are here. So you can see that you're not seeing any visuals. You're not seeing any visuals. You're not seeing a lot of charts and everything. So the key here is, the reason why we are here is to allow you know how to make business decisions with data. So you not just analyze, you can move a step further, a step further to, um, you can move a step further to uh, the process of, um taking business decisions can move forward to the process of taking business decisions so which is very very important yes yeah, so i will just take brush you through each of this quickly i brought you to each of this quickly and um, we would move on to business decision which is the other of the and we can cover one or two things within the short time we have so data decision is where is the problem solving the problem solving part of decision making is problem part of this solving part of decision making. You need to understand the problem. You need to understand the problem. Understanding the problem is very key because if you don't understand the problem, you don't know where to collect data from. You don't know the kind of data you need actually. So understanding the problem is a very key thing in this data decision making. It's a very key thing. So you start at understanding the problem, then you move on to data collection. I know most of us are very familiar with data collection. So very quickly, um, um, I don't know, I don't know, since considering the, um, the background of people we have in the classroom, so I'm just going to have to explain this part so because people are still new to it. So we have the primary data collection, we have the secondary data collection. When you hear questionnaire, you hear Google form, I know most of you are familiar with Google Form. So a lot of organizations use Google Form to collect data. They use, organization, they use um, Google Forms to collect data. They use Google Forms to collect data, which is very important because collecting data is, is another... So, excuse me. So collecting data is another key thing is another key thing you need to understand. So some organizations have information. So I'll give you an instance of secondary data. Look at reports um, banks produce every year. Banks produce annual reports every year. That's an example of secondary data. You want to know about COVID-19 within 2019 to 2020. I don't need to go anywhere. I need to go to CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention their website, I can get secondary data from there. So I can use that to check, okay, in 2020, this number of people had 
COVID in this particular location. I don't know if you understand me. So I'm trying to relate everything I'm saying to a real life scenario. So you know that everything here is not theory. It's the practical application, which is very important. Not the practical application is very important. Data cleaning is just English. So data cleaning is just English. If I get data from, say, Center for Disease Control website, or I get data from World Bank, World Bank where they give data for different for different um, sectors. I can go there and collect data, but the data might not, everything in that data set might not be what I require, what I need. So I need to clean the data to something very useful so I can make use of it for whatever I want to use it for. That's the process of cleaning. So you are just cleaning data. You are cleaning data so you can use it and analyze it easily. So in sometimes you need to convert data CSV files, you need to move the data, you need to export them, you need to do a bit of web scraping. Yes, when you web scrape data, you can do web scraping um, and into Excel spreadsheets, clean the data, then move it to Power BI and then analyze. So all these things I'm saying, you know, there are things that Jupyter Academy will help you do. So I'm not going into detail of now to analyze data. What I'm just doing is just giving you a superficial view an overview of all these key things. But you need to learn them, take a course on Jupyter. So that's not what we are here for. We are here for basically business decision making with data, which is the key thing that we are here for. So quickly, um, type check if you understand what has been said so far, and we are good to move on to the next thing on the item. OK. OK, check, OK. If you make a check, you will not check. So, all right, so thank you all for your response. So let's move on. So we have case scenarios that we're going to be treating in the next few minutes. And so that's one of the reasons why we are here. So this is the business of the day. This is the business of the day. And we want to use these four case scenarios to see a lot of problem across sectors. Yes, yeah, so you can see a lot of um, problem across each sector. So we pick the first case scenario. So a donor seller is having challenge knowing where she's getting it from in business. So he comes to you. Um, take for instance, chicken maker. Um, someone comes to you and said ah, she don't know if she's making profit uh, or uh, ibilolu. Uh, someone comes to you and she said she don't know if she's making. Um, sorry, ibilola. Sorry. So. Someone comes to you and she says she does not know if she's making profit as a donut seller. So she tells you, I've given an instance of bread seller earlier, of a bread producer. So she tells you that um, she sells donuts and she makes, um, sometimes she makes 20 naira or 20,000 in a day. And sometimes she makes just 5,000, sometimes she makes just 2,000. This is just a, a quick scenario of what some business people go through. Yes, yeah, so some business will go through, but since they are not learning about what data they need to do, and they come to you as a data analyst to tell you, okay, she doesn't know where she's getting it from. That sometimes our sales are high, sometimes our sales are low. So you can't see, we can just give you information, but as she just know that she's just telling you the challenge she's having. As a data analyst, what do you do? First case scenario is just simple. She might not be a standard business, but she's selling something. She's making profit of, out of it. So what you need to ask is, okay, what like I, I said earlier, I was giving an instance of a bread seller. You need to know the behavior of your customers. Understanding consumer behavior is one way to actually eat them on the nail, eat the nail on the head. I, so understanding consumer behavior is a way to eat the nail on the head. If I'm going to the north and I need to sell something, and I need to sell something to maybe some set of devout Muslims, for instance, some of them, they are very heavy on looking responsible, looking very coordinated, like the north people. They don't like the proper dancing. They like you covering yourself. Like, they like you... Um, just looking well organized and the way they buy you buy into you 
but I now go there, I'm wearing a skimpy gown, I'm wearing a cloth that is revealing my chest, and I want to go and sell a product for someone in that demography. Yeah, the number one thing I've successfully done is I've successfully turned their customers against me. Why? Because I'm not appealing to their behavior. I'm not appealing to their behavior. So that's one thing you need to understand. Yeah. You need to understand that it's it's um it's very important to appeal to the customer behavior. So now what do I do in that case? What I do is I get a a yeah, an outfit that covers me top bottom. Maybe I'm I'm going to a Muslim demographic. I want to sell a product. I get a clothes that appeals to their behavior. And the first thing when they see me, they welcome me. Oh, daughter is salam alaikum. And you respond. I'm sorry for Muslims here. I don't know if I got that right. So they greet you in their in their way, and you respond. You even responding to the greeting. It's a way of creating a bond with your customers. So that's a data point. So it's more than just um, we bought 20 products with no data points are as much as understanding consumer behavior. Yeah, so uh, moving on. Uh, for the donut seller, you need to understand our sales. What time she opens, what time she closes, when does this thing she makes more sale. You take all those data points, you study it, do a research in that environment that or people that do donuts, ask them questions. Oh, okay, you sell your donuts. Wow, why, how come this one is not selling us? So you look at what this one is doing better. Those data points you pick are what you inform your decision. Oh, madam, you are not making a mistake. Students don't resume schools. They don't resume school until 12 in the afternoon. And for you to sell your donut, that means you have to be there like 11.30 max. So when they are coming, they get it as they are going for classes. So by 12, 1, you have finished selling your donuts. That's where you have solved a problem of a donut seller. Simple. And as simple as that is, you have, you have done problem solving. You don't have to carry chat and start showing her. Ma, this is the... In 20... In, 2012, you sold to so, so so she's not a learned person that will understand your visuals. Well, you will be practical with times in solving that problem. So case scenario solved. That's number one. Number two, we have a scenario where Topper does not know if she's a wasteful spender or not, if she's a wasteful spender or not. But the company that makes develops app, don't develop an app for people like Topper budgeting app. People like Topper and don't want to help solve her, her problem. So as someone who's going to be developing an app, what are the data points you need for the budgeting app? Your income, your normal income, okay? What are your spending? So you need a daily spending. You need some key data points. So that's one reason why it's, uh, data analysis is beyond, is beyond analyzing and everything. So you need to understand things that drives all this. So this way, you will be able to even work in the fintech sector. You will be able to work in technology sector easily, easily. So because you understand the behavior behind data, so you can easily tell a story out of it, and you can easily appeal to the emotions of your audience that way using your visuals, using your analysis. So, marketing company just needs a, to develop the app. They need to monitor top end spending habits. So they will tell her that okay. Your annual income, okay. Your monthly income is thirty thousand, okay. Um, if you put it on the app, thirty thousand. So every single day, if the boy buys cloth of twenty thousand, she puts it there, or she buys a note of one thousand, she puts it there every day. She records cracks are spending for thirty days in the month. Then she goes. The app can have okay the visualization to where at the end of the month, the can see that oh, I spent. 80% of my income on clothes. And that shows that, and my savings was just 5%. That shows that I'm a wasteful spender. So, so that means the player has to, has to work on her behavior of spending. So you can make decisions. You can even advise her based on her spending habits that, okay, this, 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 okay. The player, you need to sink. 10% or 20% of your income every month. Then spend less on outfits. Spend on less on outfits. You don't have to buy outfits every month. 
then for your school stuff if it's so it's that way you would you be able to give proper decisions to make and when you develop the budgeting app it's going to be so user friendly that even top will buy, anybody like top would buy into it and they can monitor their spending habits that's why we have a lot of apps on play store now that can do budgeting it started from trying to solve a problem of someone like top so you have to understand that case scenario two solved Number three, Zen Bank Nigeria want to know how well they are doing using key performance metrics like revenue, annual revenue, that's their dividend. So for you to do this, you need to take, you can monitor the revenue of an organization in just one year. You can only measure it over a period of time. So if it's annual report, I told you about annual report, which is a data collection point. You take the annual report of the bank for a period of five years or 10 years, monitor their revenue. Oh, in 2022, we had a very bad um, debt. And you can't know all these things if you are not versatile. So I'm going to show you something quickly. I'm going to show you something quickly. Uh, sorry. I'm going to show you something quickly. So if you can see my spreadsheet, say check in the chat box. If you can see the spreadsheet on the screen, say check. Oh, great. So um, I'm actually working on the, I'm not a, I'm not a financial uh, person. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I don't have my first degree in accounting. I don't have my first degree in anything accounting related. As a matter of fact, I had my degree in building technology. Well, here is me doing something related to accounts. What can you see? What can you see on the screen? You can see, uh, let me zoom it in a bit. You can see share price. This is an organization in the UK. You can see share price. You can see dividends per share, cost of their dividend. You can see market capitalization. You can see shareholders' wealth. All these things are for, the, for, um, for a, a business. This is not a banking business, so this is not a financial business. This is a normal organization, but their account information. Yeah, so this is the account information. So all these key things are, are very important. They are very important. So if I was to monitor their habits now, take for instance now, see their revenue. See their revenue for the first year, second year, third year. So I can come here and, and just I just want to do a bit of visuals. Uh, I just monitor it. Just come here, bring it here. So I can monitor the revenue. So let me just add a bit of years to it. So, uh, so I can select the year. And bam. So sorry, so they selected the wrong thing. So um, for the y-axis. Okay. Sorry. Um, so I can select this. I've selected the revenue. So I want to select the year. The year for the data. So I want to select it. Okay. This is acting funny. Uh, mm, let's see. So the label. Why is taking so much time? I think I'm the, can act funny sometimes. So this is not where we're going. I just wanted to see their revenue between um 2017 and 2022 yeah so in 2017 they had about 1 million um pounds in 2020 they had about 636 pounds then 1000 pounds yeah, so all these things are millions they are millions so it's about a billion so you need to see all this all this information all this information and this way you can tell how the organization is, but I don't need to use visuals to explain all this. So I'll be wrapping up shortly. So I'll be wrapping up shortly. 
So I'm just showing you all this to see that um, a data analyst job is beyond just analyzing. You need to understand some key things. So I, after I did all this spreadsheet, I created a post for you where I explained all these, the implications of all these, all these grades you are seeing. They are just um, an implication of having a very low um, a decrease. A red decrease, why this is just an increase. A red decrease. So all these things are just key. So let's just move on. Um, I'm going to go back to my slide now. I'm going to go back to my slide. So that's how you apply, as how you apply, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, uh, so that's how you apply um, that. So last scenario, which my applies to for Fiat, I don't know if she's still on the call, is uh, she's a digital marketer. Her is a digital marketer. So um, some of you as a digital marketer, as you can add, you want sponsored ads, you you do all those things on someone's handle. If you are only sponsored ad on an Instagram handle, you need to understand that you don't just go and sponsor that. You need to see how well the page is doing. It's page LD. Each of those applications, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Instagram, they all have built in analytics. So you want to know if a page is doing well. Go to the analytics page. Look at if you are seeing negatives, just know that page is not old. You need to do some work in terms of that. So you cannot just go and sponsor that. It might not convert, it might not generate leads. So this analysis job, you don't have to take it um, as okay, white collar and everything. You can be a digital marketer and yet be a very good analyst. So uh that's it. That's that the case scenarios I'll be I'll be showing us. I, I believe we'll be able to get one or two things. And these are the key takeaways I'm going to leave with you guys. Um, think big. We have a very short time. Like I said earlier, we have a very short time. Too. So think big. Think big. Think big. Think big. And before thinking. So all these things. I, I did not have a first degree in financial whatsoever. But I want to see myself analyze data in the financial part. And that's one of the things I, that propelled me to start reading annual reports of banks annual report of organizations and start picking one or two things out of it. And now I can say confidently that I could pick their data, their reports and analyze their financials critically. Again, so it has to be, we have to be forward thinking, read wide. I think, I think it's Kabi that say he ends, um, Mohammed, Mohammed that said he enjoys reading. It's a good thing to read wide. I, I would not be able to do the financial, it's why I don't read. After so much headache, after so much compilation, here we are. So, like I said earlier, choose your ad. Choose your ad. Choose your ad. That's where you determine what field or what sector you want to function. So, I will end with this quote. The price of light is less than the cost of darkness. So, yeah, you know, it used to pay 40000 now and learn or you pay, any, pay the amount required to learn the skill now or spend so much or regret later. So the regret will be that, okay, someone brought you, oh, talk where there's a $2 million, $2,000 job for a data analyst. Maybe next year, you, 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 you saw the job and he said, okay, entry level, just need to learn this, this, that. And those are key things that you could have learned maybe just after this class on Jupiter Academy, just register. So, and you do not register for it. And the job came next year. And maybe at that time, one dollar is going for, I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. So I'm just giving an instance. Maybe one dollar is now going for about a thousand era. That means you are losing over two million, almost two million era. You are losing just because you refuse to pay the price of light now. So I will leave you this note. 